this is called the Iron Fountain. And this is one of the few buildings, well, it's a fountain, left standing after the devastating 1988 earthquake here in Gumri. It leveled about 80% of the city's infrastructure and killed from 25,000 to 50,000 people in the northern region. And even though there was an abundance of international aid after the fact, the damage really was done where so many people had lost their lives. There was 130 factories in the area that were completely demolished. 170,000 people had lost their jobs and Gumri has really never been the same. In 1988, this area was actually supposed to be a new central hub of the city. There was supposed to be hotels, restaurants, cafes, um, you know, large, beautiful apartment buildings. But basically, this is the outskirts of the city now, and there are just some shanty sort of houses and people still even living in the rubble that was left over. But I will be taking you guys to the actual new uh, center of the city as well, which is very nice. Um, I think Gumri is really beginning to stand, you know, on its feet again after that devastation. But I just wanted to showcase what this city had gone through and just how strong and resilient the people are. Another cool thing about Gumri is that Anthony Bourdain actually visited the city in his show Parts Unknown. So I'm going to see if I can try and find the restaurant that he went to and order a few things that he did. And then I also want to take you guys to a Soviet amusement park that is still operating here in the city. Um, Hopefully I don't die. <laughs> So here we are in the main square, guys. Uh, this is called Varanats Square. Uh, it's got all the main government buildings as the one behind me that you can see. There's a beautiful fountain and uh, two of the city's most famous cathedrals, the um, All Saviors Cathedral in English and then the Holy Mother of God Cathedral is just on either side. And then also uh, right behind me over there is where you would enter Old Town, which is probably the most famous part of the city. That's where you'll find a lot of museums, lots of great cafes, restaurants. But yeah, let me give you guys a little tour around the main center. And afterwards, I want to take you to my favorite little donut shop called Ponchik Munchik, where I highly recommend you grab an afternoon snack.
All right, guys, so not only is this an awesome lunch spot, but it is an absolute must for you to come here to try the donuts. They are called ponchiki, and they're just super, well, actually, they're not that light. I was about to say they're light, but actually, this one's kind of heavy. Depends on the kind you get, but definitely recommend trying one of their uh, original ones. I also got an Americano coffee, and then this is actually fun. It's like a pear lemonade which i haven't seen anywhere else so if you come to gumri definitely come to ponchik monchik so another interesting thing to mention as you can see in the hotel behind me Gumri actually used to be called Alexandropol uh, in the 19th century, even before Soviet times. And then in Soviet times, I think the name they had was Leninakan. I think Lenin was really obsessed with naming places uh, after himself. But then after the Soviet Union fell apart, Gumri became Gumri. So where we are right now is actually the local market right behind me and this is a fantastic place to go for local produce whole bunch of delicious food in this place some clothes shoes whatever you need and definitely the best prices in the city Here we are in Gumri's historical district, which I believe is originally called Kumeri. And what makes this area very interesting is that the majority of the buildings are made out of this interesting black ash sort of uh, rock, sometimes kind of this reddish burnt color. And it's actually this type of volcanic stone that is readily found in this area. This is also the area of the city where you'll find a lot of museums. Right in front of me is actually their drama theater that is still uh, working. They put on some, uh, you know, local sort of shows. Of course, they are all in Armenian. But where I want to take you guys now is actually one of the most famous museums, which is dedicated to two Armenian sisters who traveled all around the world in Soviet times and did a lot of uh, art pieces to kind of document their journey. enjoyed that museum slash gallery you could say and it is just amazing to think 
of how much harder it must have been to be those women and traveling alone in those times. I'm no art buff by any stretch of the word, but I really thought that their uh, pictures were quite beautiful. So if you're looking for a museum to go to, I would highly recommend. So now it's about six o'clock and unfortunately the weather is slightly turning. I hope it doesn't rain, but we are off to Central Park, the main green space of the city. And as promised, I wanna take you guys on the Soviet rides that they have here in the amusement park. Thank you for letting me live another day. <laughs> that was fun. That was that was a good time. That uh, brought me back to my childhood, and uh, I am actually surprised that those rides are still operating. But now I think it is time, right before we go to supper, to Anthony Bourdain's restaurant of choice. I want to take you guys to one last place. It's kind of on the outskirts of the city. It's this huge monument called Mother Armenia. And while there's not a lot of information online from what I could gather, it's kind of a testament to all the different uh, Soviet victories in World War II. And uh, the actual Mother Armenia statue itself is kind of for the freedom and protection of Armenia. Well, this is unfortunate. Um, it looks like the restaurant that Anthony Bourdain ate at, this place right here, is uh, currently closed uh, and I don't think it is just for today. So that sucks. Uh, on Google Maps it had said it was open and there were reviews about three, four months ago, so I just assumed that it would be open today. Luckily though, uh, there seems to be a restaurant right beside it that is just having a party. It's called Florence. So I think we may as well 
give this place a try and maybe it will be just as good. Cheers to a fantastic day. I at least ordered the beer that Anthony Bourdain had. This is just called Gumri Beer, uh, a local brewery. It's good. It's refreshing. I mean, if you've been watching me for a while, you know I'm not a lager sort of person, but it's good. To start off with, I decided to get two different sort of starters. I got the eggplant rolls, which look really, really good. And then uh, over here is some tabbouleh salad, which of course you can find in many different cultures. But I find here in Armenia, it is a bit different. They make it with bulgar, which is a bit of a different grain instead of couscous. So it gives it a bit of a different taste. So I decided to get a soup for my main since Anthony Bourdain had tried oxtail soup when he was in Gumri. This is another traditional Armenian soup, which is called abeluk. It's a type of herb that is found here in the north. And this particular soup is made with chicken. So let's give the soup a try. It is very thick. <laughs> pretty good. It's actually very rich. I don't know if you guys can see, I'll give you a close-up here. <laughs> it is like thick with this green stuff <laughs> and grains, but it is very good. I had never seen it before on a menu, so I would recommend. Oh boy, <laughs> I am tired guys. Today was such a fantastic but long day. I've been up since like 7 a.m. and uh, just walking around the city mixed with the heat. I am ready to crawl into bed. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I think Gumri is a fantastic city and definitely worth visiting um, if you come to Armenia. You don't have to come here for a whole week as I have. Obviously, I stay much longer in destinations because I'm filming them and learning about them. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the video. Comment down below your thoughts. And as always, keep being your own kind of beautiful. Bye, guys.